So, you've decided, oh, this chair doesn't really work for, uh, you've decided you hate fun. Hello everyone and welcome back to Know Your Salty. Today we're looking at a deck that I came up with kind of on accident. I just want to play Yasuye. Uh, I bought all the standard stuff and all of it came in, but I still wanted to try it out at least. And so I was like, well, let me see what pieces I have in my bag. And I had all the infinite loot pieces. And so I was like, let's just see what can happen. I normally really hated the infinite loop deck just because it was really boring to me to just sit there and just dig for cards and do the infinite loop or die. But I think I've accidentally come up with the best way to play the infinite loop in premium. And you might be thinking, oh Ty, well, why don't you just play Nue Dio? And to that I say, I do. But do you really need me to help you build Nue Dio? I mean, so many other people have done it. Although I guess I don't stop me from doing my DP deck profile. But I feel like that deck just kind of builds itself. So Today we're going to take a look at something a little more spicy. To start it off, because this is an infinite loop deck, we are playing a full playset of all of our infinite loop pieces. Now, if you don't know what the infinite loop is, WCC has done a couple of different videos that go very in depth on the infinite loop, so you can go check those out. But I don't want you to stop watching this video. So to just kind of give you the TLDR, you basically have a Hedon Scroll down and you have Metamorphox copy the name of Hedon Scroll. Then you have a dual weapon out and a Tanba out and either a second dual weapon or a Metamorphox, a second Metamorphox also copying dual weapon. And then you just abuse Shadow Stitch, which triggers whenever your units don't hit. So you swing under with dual weapon you use his skill to retire himself, choose the Metamorphox, copying Heat and Scroll, call out a Heat and Scroll, then use the Heat and Scroll to target the other dual weapon or the Metamorphox hopping dual weapon to call out two more dual weapon. And every time you don't hit, meanwhile, Tanba's putting the dual weapons back into the deck and back into the deck and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you just loop this over and over and over again. Um, if you want more detail on that, like I said, WCC does a really good video on it, but these are our pieces. Um, this is not the main goal anymore, thankfully. It can be. This is basically our Exodia win condition. If we get it, cool. But the way we've built the deck is that we don't have to see it in order to have fun plays, which is why I'm really enjoying this deck right now. Next, we've got our playset of each of the new Yasuye's. This, I feel like, patches up the two main weaknesses this deck had, in my opinion. The first one being losing our pieces to the drop zone or to damage and then healing them and then they're in the drop zone, or having to ride them and then soul blasting them and then you're just, oh, I'm out a piece and I can't get it back, or I can't search for it, at least. That's fixed up with the new Yasuye because he calls from drop zone. So as long as you're able to get something to copy the name of what you need on board, you can call another one from drop zone. So that's really, really handy. The other main weakness this deck had was Hanali. You can't go with infinite attacks if Hanali's there limiting you to like four, I think it was. Tenma just says goodbye to Hanali. You just make this like your second, whatever limit you have, you just make this one, one of those, and then you tuck Hanali back to the bottom of their deck and then they'd have no more Hanali. You're good. It's really kind of stupid. I don't think people have really realized this yet and probably because Nue Dayo is such a prominent Murakumo deck and that's fine, but this is really fun and I'm really enjoying this so far. Next, we have our grade twos. I'm running a playset of the new Awazu and a playset of Sotahagi. Sotahagi is my kind of personal spice added to this deck that I'm really enjoying just because it makes for more and more interesting plays. And Awazu I think is just necessary regardless. This can be anything, this I don't think is negotiable. This basically makes it so that you're running eight copies of any single card in your deck and it's really handy to be able to call that out, turn them into whatever you need, and then start copying and cloning from there. But what's also really nice about him is that he keeps his original name. So if you need to get more than one piece, you can call down a Wazoo, 
have him copy something, then use a copying or cloning ability to copy a wazoo and then do it again to get whatever other piece you need. And that's really, really handy. Soda Hagi, I really like just for multi-attacking purposes. He has a really nice interaction with one of our strides that I'll get into later. Um, but like I said, it can be anything, but I'm really liking Soda Hagi for some fun multi-attacking plays. Then we have our remaining grade ones, three copies of Takahime and two copies of Siren Fox. These are another thing that can kind of be anything. I'm just liking these again for the multi-attacking plays. They both accomplish pretty much the same goal. Takahime is just better if you're going first and you're doing that a standard Yasuie play where you re-ride Tenma from drop and then you can just copy and get more Tenma. It's really easy to build a board full of Tenma in this deck, especially if you're going first. And because dual weapon and Tanba are not GB1, you can do that going first and you can just get some really, really fun plays going, even going first. And that's what I really like. I really like decks in premium that don't care if they go first or second, they have a game plan either way. Siren Fox is better going second because mid battle, you can counter blast, tuck it into soul, choose one of your rear guards, call out two more of them. Usually that's going to be like a Soda Hagi or a Tenma just to effectively board wipe your opponent or multi attack them into oblivion. For the remainder of our triggers, we have your four draw PGs, four stride crits, four heals, and we have Goemon as the starter because he's the best starter in Murakumo. I'm running the stride crits because ideally I don't want to have to use Tenma to stride. I want to have Tenma on the board if at all possible and I want to be putting them back into the deck with Tanba and then calling them back out because it is so good and so easy to abuse in this deck. Now we move on to our strides. Strides in the infinite loop deck are kind of funny because they almost don't really matter, <laughs> especially if you're playing for just getting the infinite loop off. It doesn't really matter what they do, they just as long as you're GB1, the infinite loop's gonna go off because it doesn't require Soul Blast or Counter Blast. But this deck is built to have other plays besides that. So we're running one copy of Shibaraku Buster. Never really go into this, but in this deck, your strides are basically a toolbox of just situational things. This basically calls out a copy of one of your rear guards and gives it drive checks. It's only for the first battle though. I just had to double check that because that'd be kind of broken with Soda Hagi to just restand him and get more drive checks. It can be pretty good, especially with Tenma. Uh, there's a lot of Tenma abuse in this deck. Next, we've got two copies of Shibaraku Victor. Mainly just use this to try and find more pieces. He's basically Soul Blast 1, check top 7 for copies of cards you have on board or in drop zone, I think. Yeah, okay, I was right. I know my cards. Sort of. Like I said, just gets you pieces. Doesn't really do much else than that. He does have an interesting effect where if he's face up in the G zone, Shadow Stitch, Soul Blast 1, call him to rear guard. So that can be kind of a fun play, but I never really end up using that either because I forget it's a thing or I just already have other plays on board that I'm doing. Next, we have two copies of Yasuye Goma. This is Goma, right? Not Genma. Oh, this is Genma. Next, we have two copies of Yasuye Genma. This is one of our spicy plays we can do. This is the stride that really interacts well with Soda Hagi. Its skill is basically Shadow Stitch, give five of your units plus 5k in a crit. It's really easy to abuse to get your opponent to like four damage, sometimes even three. They won't want to risk getting double crit to death. And then you just give or <laughs> They just take it and then get double crit to death because they don't want you to give plus 5k in a crit to your entire board. And it's really easy to get a board full of soda hagis if you're going into this play. Just go, it's so fun to just stride into this and then go, oops, all soda hagi, and then swing with four soda hagi. Like each one goes off because you can copy one to have a fifth one. And so each soda hagi is counter blast, tuck another soda hagi to the bottom of the deck, restand them, give them plus five. And then that's eight attacks right there with a crit and power. And it's, oh, it's, it's really good. And I really like having a play that I'm excited about in an infinite loop deck that isn't the infinite loop. I really like not having to rely on that one play. And this is one of my favorite things to do. He also has a skill to copy a card from your rear guard or drop zone. That can come in handy too. Sometimes you'll do that. I, I mostly like it for that uh, multi-attacking with crits play. Next, we've got two copies of Yasuye Goma. Never really go into this. Uh, I like having the option though. He can create a board. Like if you've already stridden into Yasuye Goma or Genma, <laughs> 
If you've already stridden into Genma, you can go into Goma and call out the two Genma to board. It's like a free way to build a board, essentially. And then he also has the Shadow Stitch skill that if something doesn't hit, you put cards to the bottom of your deck and draw a card. Then we have two copies of Hamura Raider. Hamura Raider is our OG restanding stride that we've had all the way back since like GBT03. This is one that again, don't really go into too often. I probably go into this more than Goma, but you can also loop this. It's really easy between having Awazu and Metamorphox to build a board and cloning and copying to get three units the same name on board and then you can just keep restanding him by tucking them and then using dual weapon to call more and more out and then swinging with him again tucking them back to the bottom of the deck restanding him and drawing a bunch of cards and getting a bunch of drive checks it's really handy to have don't really go into it and it's not a truly infinite loop the way the main loop in this deck is but i like having the option to just be like well here you go Here's a bunch of vanguard attacks. I'm gonna draw a bunch of cards. And if you don't die this turn, well, at least you're not gonna kill me during my next turn. And lastly, we have two copies of Nue Dio because it's easier than you'd think to be able to get five rear guards with the same name in this deck between Metamorphox and Owazu and Yasuie copying everything. This isn't that difficult to do. The only thing that sucks compared to like the typical Huga deck in premium is that you can't give all the rear guards power so you're not gonna be able to beat down columns and it doesn't work with tenma unfortunately because tenma retires himself after his battle so if you try to go in for a bunch of tenma they're just gonna retire themselves you're not gonna have anything to restand but he's good as a finisher because if your opponent's at four or five damage they're not gonna be able to risk taking too many hits and that lowers your chances of them getting a defensive trigger and then you can swing with him and force them to drop five cards if they can or die or if if you go with this with the board full of soda hagi you just swing with all of them don't trigger any of their skills and then swing with him restand all of them and then start triggering their skills that's 12 soda hagi attacks just right then in there with whatever else multi-attack you can do in that turn it can get pretty crazy so i like having this option i go into this more than i go do something like hamura raider or goma um, so he's definitely very useful to have g guardians are not the most important thing but we'll start off with shira hagano not the most important card because uh, we don't really care about having a high gb count so the g guardian flip isn't that important and the counter blast also kind of kind of hurts it but it's probably the biggest shield we can get for the easiest um, so it definitely has its uses next we have two copies of shishi yuzuki um, this is one we use more often than not. She basically chooses one of our rear guards, moves them to the guardian circle, and then at the end of the battle, searches your deck for another copy of that rear guard and calls it back. So you end up just the same as where you were, just a big boost in shield. So this is probably the more useful over Shira Hagano. And then we have a copy of Hogan Wing. Hogan Wing works very similarly to Shishi Yuzuki, except instead of moving the rear guard to Guardian Circle, he just searches the deck for a copy of one of your rear guards, and then at the end of the battle, puts it back to the deck. So this puts it to the drop zone, this puts it back to the deck. It all just kind of depends on if you need that piece still in deck, or if you don't mind it going to drop zone to call back later. And then lastly, we've just got the one dismal because we're a very rear guard heavy peace reliant deck and it's pretty important to be able to say no leave that piece alone you can't touch it i want it for next turn please thanks bye so not really much to explain about that one all right so my main playmat camera died while i was finishing up this video so i didn't get to mention but if you're the kind of person that just has to always win and hates spicy plays and having other things to do, you can totally replace the Soda Hagis with Midoro Pyros and the Siren Fox and Takahimes with Senbei and Miyagiku. I would think less of you for it if you did, but it's basically just gonna replace cards that do things with cards that just dig for other cards so that you can get your infinite loop off if that is the most important thing in the world to you if you just have to do it but you know do so at the cost of my respect for you
Well, that is the deck, everybody. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you give it a try. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to help me out, like, subscribe, share, all that typical YouTuber stuff. And you can also check out my other main channel that I post different kinds of content to if you want to. That'd be pretty cool. Also, uh, shout out to JJ of Good Game Mr. Rogers and uh, Crushing the Meta for giving me a shout out on Twitter. Uh, that was pretty cool. Thank you, JJ. Very cool. Um, anyways, uh, till next time. Uh, he's Soul Blast, check top seven, choose, uh, choose ones that... <laughs>